Thank you. Hi, Happy New Year from all us Nelsons. Uh, about five or six years ago, when the boys were smaller and Harriet and I were a little younger, we did a show that everybody seemed to like. We've been waiting for an opportunity to bring it to you once again. We thought tonight might be a good time. Oh, by the way, David has not joined the Beatniks. He's wearing the long hair and beard because he's currently shooting a Western movie. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, once again, happy 1959 from all of us to all of you. Eastman Kodak Company is happy to bring you America's favorite family, the Nelsons. Ozzie. Harriet. David. And Ricky. Like most of us, they like to save their good times in pictures, in snapshots, and of course, in their own home movies. And now, here's Ozzy with a New Year's resolution that's not only rewarding, but mighty easy to keep. You know, I can't think of a better time than right now to make yourself this promise. Why not decide to put your family in your own home movies? They're full of action, full of color, and your family will enjoy them for years to come. And with a brownie movie camera by Kodak, it's just so easy you won't believe it. It's as easy as snapshots, actually. And Kodak makes home movies as inexpensive as snapshots, too. So why not resolve right now to make your family movie stars? The Kodak way. Brownie movie cameras by Kodak start at $32.50 or as little as $3.25 down. See the Brownie movie camera at your dealer tomorrow. And now Kodak invites you to enjoy... The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet. Aren't you fellows going outside? Oh, I can't go out. My English teacher gave me a lot of extra homework to do. How come? Just because I didn't hand in my notebook yesterday. Well, why didn't you hand it in? Wasn't it finished? Sure, but I lost it. Oh, well, that's a shame. It's a big jip, that's what it is. What's a big jip? Well, Ricky lost his notebook yesterday, and his teacher gave him a lot of extra homework. Well, did you explain to the teacher that you'd lost it? Yes, sir. I told her exactly what happened, but I guess she didn't believe me. Well, it's funny she wouldn't believe you. Uh, what did happen exactly? Well, I was walking to school yesterday and my shoelace came untied. So I put my notebook on a truck park next to the drugstore while I tied my shoe. Now, wait a minute. And the truck drove away with your notebook? Heck, if you saw her, why didn't you stop him? <laughs> I didn't see anything of the kind. Well, uh, you mean that's what happened, Rick? Yes, sir. And that's what you told the teacher? Yes, sir. That's what happened. Well, I don't blame her for giving you all that extra work. Well, uh, are you sure you just didn't uh, dream this and your notebook is still up in your room? Oh, no, sir. Personally, I agree with Pop. Sounds like you dreamed this whole thing up. I did not. Well, it, it's not that we doubt your word, Rick, but sometimes it's easier to tell the truth and take the punishment. That's what I did. I told my teacher the truth and now I'm taking the punishment. <laughs> uh, yes, son, but I mean, sometimes the punishment isn't so severe when, when you tell the real truth. That is, I don't mean to imply that, that, that you're not uh, telling the... Uh, uh, Harriet, do you have any suggestions? Well, I suggest you get started on some of that work before the whole day is gone. Well, come on, little man, I'll give you a hand. Hey, you mean you'll help me do my homework? No, but I'll sharpen a pencil for you. <laughs> well, you look ambitious. Oh, yeah. Well, it's kind of a chilly afternoon. I thought I might as well build a fire. That's a good idea. You know, Harriet, I, I've been thinking a little more about that story that Ricky told his teacher. And I can't say that I blame her for not quite believing him. It, it is pretty fantastic, you know. Well, it could have happened. Of course, I will admit it did sound a little forced. Yeah. Still in all, you can't come right out and, and tell him that you don't believe him. You tried. <laughs> I was in kind of a spot. I mean, after all, I did want to impress him with the fact that it's always better to tell the truth and face the consequences. Well, there's no question about it. <sighs> Say, before you pull a Rip Van Winkle on me, I've got something to tell you. Do you recall the last PTA meeting? Well, yes, I believe so. What about it? 
Then you probably remember sounding off about not enough of the parents taking an active part in the entertainment. <laughs> well, yes, but all that's been taken care of. Don't you remember Thorny and I agreed to be co-chairman of the entertainment committee? We're going to put on some pretty riotous stuff. <laughs> Of course, uh, we're not going to hog the spotlight. I mean, we'll give the other talent a chance, too. I think you might have to give one of them a chance this afternoon. Oh? Do you know Mrs. Howard? Well, yes, I, I believe so. Why? Well, she phoned a little while ago. She wants to come over and discuss the readings she'd like to give at the next meeting. Readings? Mm-hmm. She specializes in reading poetry. She has a rather large repertoire, I'm told, several hundred poems. Well, for goodness sakes, Harriet, couldn't you talk her out of it? No, not very successfully. She said she'd be over in about an hour. Oh, holy smokes. Who ever heard of reading poetry at a PTA meeting anyway? Isn't it bad enough we have to listen to the Secretary and Treasurer's report? <laughs> Nevertheless, she's coming over to see you. You'll be here, won't you? Oh, oh, yes, I'll, I'll be here. I think I'll go over and get Thorny, though. As long as he's co-chairman, I think he ought to suffer through this stuff with me. <laughs> Come over here. I want to show you something. You won't believe your eyes. Well, wait a minute. I've got something to tell you, and you won't believe your ears. You recall, don't you, that you and I were elected the co-chairman of the entertainment committee over at the PTA? Are you kidding? Who do you think stuffed the ballot box? <laughs> Listen for a minute. Uh, do you recall having met a Mrs. Howard over there? She recites uh, poetry. She's a woman with a, with a tremendous repertoire. Well, you're not exactly skinny yourself. <laughs> Listen to me, will you? It seems she's coming over to our house in about an hour. She's going to audition maybe 150 or so of her poems. And I thought it'd be nice if you, as co-chairman, uh, came over and we sat down in the living room and, and enjoyed them together. Well, give her my regards. No, 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 just a second, Thorny. You and I are in this together. Well, isn't there some way we can get out of it together? <laughs> now, wait a minute. When you accept the chairman... What the heck are you doing with this? Well, this is what I wanted to show you. Now, this ladder looks pretty heavy, doesn't it, Oz? Yeah. We just left it once. Well, how about... <laughs> it's as light as a feather. <laughs> it's made out of some new kind of metal. It reaches right up to the roof, and you can move it around like a toy. How about that? Have you tried it out yet? Well, not yet, but I think my boy Will lost a ball on your roof. Oh, now, wait a minute, Tony. That's an awful high roof. I mean, if you're figuring on us exploring around there, I... I don't think that'd be very smart. I mean, it's, it's pretty windy today, you know, and, and up high like that. Guy would have to be pretty childish. No, not a childish. I mean, have to be pretty brave to, to climb up on a ladder on a day like this. Well, what are we waiting for? <laughs> Climb over here by the chimney and look around. Careful, pretty slippery. Hang on. I have rubber sole shoes on this. Fire is really burning down there. Yeah. Hey, it's a beautiful view from up here. Sure is. I think I'll do a little exploring. Hey, wait for me. I 
Take it easy. <sighs> oh, boy. Yeah, that's a beautiful view from here. Yeah. You see the bank building over there? Sure good thing I brought along my binoculars. <laughs> Let me take a look. Thanks. You've been looking through the wrong end. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, I think there's a storm coming up. Look at the clouds over there. Yeah, this jacket isn't very warm either. Where do you think the ball is? The ball? What ball? Well, why do you think we came oh. up? Oh, you mean Will's ball. Well, I didn't expect to find it up here, Oz. Come to think of it, he threw it up here sometime last winter. I think it was a snowball. <laughs> well, I had to try the ladder out some way. Hey, we better get down from here before we freeze to death. Yeah. Take it easy. Hey! Where's the ladder? The ladder? Well, you were the last one up. Well, I, I, I left it right over there. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, for goodness sakes! How are we gonna get down? Well, we can jump from here. Are you kidding? It's about 30 feet. You break every bone in your head. Don't get so excited. <laughs> Actually, I think it's pretty funny. Here we are, two grown men, climb a roof, the wind blows the ladder down. <laughs> <laughs> the thing that is kind of funny. <laughs> here we are up here yelling help hysterically. Nobody can hear us. <laughs> Storm coming up, wind, probably the rain. <laughs> here we are yelling our full heads off. <laughs> Wind's so loud, no one can hear us. What are we waiting for? Let her go, Oz. Help! Here's a scene that could be happening at your house. Home movie time for all the gang. Suddenly it's summer all over again in full-color action-packed movies. And with your own Brownie movie projector by Kodak, it's movie time, whenever you like, as often as you like. It's fun the whole family will enjoy together, over and over again. What a wonderful way to use Christmas gift money or that year-end bonus. This superb Brownie 300 movie projector by Kodak costs only $64.95. Its wide-angle lens fills your screen, even in a small room. It's easy to thread, never needs lubricating. And it's the only projector priced so low that actually lets you reverse the action for comedy effects. Or stop the film completely to enjoy a special scene. Complete with built-in carrying case and preview screen, the Brownie 300 movie projector costs $64.95 or as little as $7 down. And because it's made by Kodak, you know it's good. Well, nobody answers at the Thornberries. I wonder where Pa could be. Well, he's been gone for over an hour. Mrs. Howard will be here any minute. Gee, how come she's coming over here? Oh, she's going to read some poetry. Oh, no wonder Pa and Mr. Thornberry are hiding. <laughs> oh, Ricky, don't be ridiculous. Nobody said your father was hiding, Ricky. What was that? What was what? I thought I heard a noise on the roof. Well, probably just the wind. Hey, it looks like there's a storm coming up outside. Well, if your father doesn't get home pretty soon, there'll be a storm coming up on the inside, too. <laughs> I wonder if he and Thorny are hiding. <laughs> 
It's a fine mess you got us into. You and your featherweight ladder and your featherweight brain. Oh, now, just a minute, Arthur. Let's think about this situation. Must be somewhere we can get out of it. Well, the wind blew the ladder down. Maybe it'll blow it back up again. Oh. Well, thank you. Well, Pop wasn't at the drugstore, huh? No, I called the bowling alley and they weren't there either. Well, that's probably Mrs. Howard now. Shall I get it? No, I'll get it, dear. Hello, Mrs. Nelson. Hello, Mrs. Howard. Won't you come in? Thank you. My, but it's nice and cozy in here. Rather nippy today. Well, come on over by the fire. Oh, these are our two boys. This is David and this is Ricky. This is Miss Howard, boys. Hi, Hello, you. Mrs. Howard. Hello, boys. Oh, uh, where's Mr. Nelson? I wish I knew. This is terribly embarrassing. He went over to get Mr. Thornberry about an hour ago, and they haven't gotten back yet. Well, does Mr. Thornberry live very far from here? No, just next door. <laughs> That's what's so strange about it. I'm terribly sorry. Well, please don't feel concerned on my account. I can always come back another day. Oh, no, I wouldn't think of it. I'm sure he'll be home in a few more minutes. I am rather anxious to talk with him about having one PTA meeting dedicated to poetry. I really feel that the inspired voices of the past have a great meaning to those of us who live in the present. Oh, I think it's a wonderful idea. I've heard quite a bit about your readings. Oh, thank you very much. It is more or less a hobby of mine. Uh, would you like to hear a poem or two while we are waiting for Mr. Nelson? Oh, well, yes, that would be very nice. If we wouldn't be imposing upon you. Oh, of course not. I love an audience, even though it's a captive one. Now, I suppose uh, you sit over there in the box seat. And um, I stand um, here. Oh, you poor boys. Knowing boys as I do, I'm sure you'd rather be outside kicking a baseball around. <laughs> oh, no, not at all. Well, it's very nice of you to say so. Uh, I have a poem here I think you boys might enjoy. It's called Columbus by Joaquin Miller. Behind him lay the gray Azores, behind the gates of Hercules. Before him, not the ghost of shores. Before him, only shores. Hey, no, wait a minute. I got another idea, a better one. If you could take a running jump and catch the limb of that elm tree and shinny on down, then you could put the ladder up for me. Good idea. And that's brilliant, except for one thing. Suppose I miss the limb of the tree. Well, the grass is pretty soft down there. Besides, I'm sure the ambulance driver will put the ladder up for me. <laughs> However, I'll be very happy to let you try it. In fact, I'll even give you a little push. No, thanks. Let's think of something else. Well, let's think of it in a hurry, because I'm getting cold. You should have worn a jacket like I did. Well, I would have if I'd have known I was going to be marooned on my roof all night long. Gosh, it's getting hungry, too. Oh, there must be some way for us to get down. Certainly, we're intelligent men. That's right. You ought to be able to think of something. Both have quick minds. Now, let's concentrate on just how we can get off this roof. How can we get down off the roof? That's our problem. Right. Here, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. 
I'm going to put it right over the top of the chimney. Wait a minute, Oz. No matter how you cook it, you're not going to eat my jacket. I'm talking about eating the jacket. I put it over the chimney. The smoke goes right back into the living room. Harriet sees all the smoke, comes outside to find out what's the matter, puts the ladder up, and we're saved. Well, it's worth trying, Oz. And lend to the rhyme of the poet the beauty of thy voice. And the night shall be filled with music, and the cares that infest the day shall fold their tents like the Arabs, and as silently steal away. Oh, that was lovely, Mrs. Howard. Very well done. Well, you were a wonderful audience. <coughs> <coughs> and the logs in the fireplace must be damp. Yes, it is rather smoky in here. Well, I guess I must be running along. I'm afraid I've outstayed my little visit. Oh, no, not at all. I'm terribly sorry that Mr. Nelson wasn't home, and I know he's going to be sorry. <laughs> Please don't think that you have to apologize, Mrs. Nelson. I know how men are. My husband is one. <laughs> Bye, boys. Nice to meet you. Bye. Bye, Mrs. Nelson. And goodbye, Mrs. Howard. Boy, this fireplace is really smoking. You think the flu is clogged up? I'll go out and see. Oh, no, wait a minute, Ricky, here. Put your coat on. It's cold out there. Oh, and if you see your father outside, tell him he better stay outside. <laughs> Look up on the roof, and there I was. <laughs> I'll see you later, Osh. Hey, hey, wait a minute, Corny. Don't go home. I want you to come in the house with me and help explain this to Harriet. Well, there's nothing to explain. Just tell her the truth. Uh, well, uh, do you think she'll believe me? No. That's why I'll see you later. <laughs> hey, come back here, you coward! Doggone it! Uh, what kind of a mood is your mother in? If I were you, I'd climb back up on the roof. <laughs> Did Mrs. Howard show up? Yes, sir. She read us some poems. They were pretty good, too. Oh, gee, I, I'm sorry I, I wasn't home. Well, that is, I, I, I was in the house. Not exactly in the house, but I, I was up on, on top of the, the house. Well, I might as well go in and face the music. Uh, where is your mother? She's in the living room. Stop worrying. <laughs> Where do you think we were? Thorny and I were up on the roof. You've been gone for three hours. Uh, yes, I, I know. You see, uh, uh, Thorny got this brand new featherweight ladder, and his son, Will, lost a baseball up on our roof. So uh, we thought it might be a good idea if we uh, went up on the, the roof to, to, uh, to look for... <laughs> Scout's on it, Harriet. I, I'm telling the truth. You mean to tell me that you two were up on the roof all this time? Yes, that, that's right. You knew Mrs. Howard was coming. Well, I know, but we couldn't get down. Well, you got up. Well, well, that's a completely different thing. See, the wind blew the ladder down. Ozzie, where have you been? <laughs> I told you, Harriet, we've been up on the roof. Are you sure you weren't hiding out in the garage? No, no, honestly, we were hiding up in... We weren't hiding any place. 
Yeah, Ricky can... Ricky... Ricky came up to, to get... Not exactly came up, but he held the ladder. And, and we could see... I thought of an old trick that I'd read about in a, in a book someplace where I took Thorny's jacket and I put it over the top of the chimney. And it blew the... Didn't the smoke all, all come out and, and he... Wait a minute, uh, Thorny's jacket is still over the chimney. Uh, I'll go up and get the jacket. That, that'll prove... Uh, you stay right where you are. Don't move. Uh, David, <laughs> will you come up and hold the ladder? week, the adventures of Ozzie and Harriet will be brought to you by the Quaker Oats Company, makers of fine foods for the whole family. Now a word about one of the many fine Quaker products. Do you know why delicious hot Quaker Oats is so good for so many families? Quaker Oats is rich in protein. A breakfast of delicious Quaker Oats with milk and sugar for a family of four provides as much total protein as six average eggs, as much total protein as 18 pieces of toast, and almost as much total protein as 18 strips of bacon. That's why your family gets that wonderful stick-to-the-ribs feeling with Quaker Oats, that wonderful feeling of well-being. And what hot breakfast is as easy and fast to prepare as Quaker Oats? Just pour it into boiling salted water, and you have creamy, smooth, delicious oatmeal with only one minute of actual cooking. And here's a tip. Before and after serving Quaker Oats, keep the pan tightly covered, and it rinses clean instantly. No scouring, no bother. So be sure your whole family gets the protein they need with a delicious hot breakfast of high-protein Quaker Oats or Mother's Oats, the same high-protein oatmeal. Mr. Nelson? Yes? Uh, I'm a driver for the Wade Trucking Company. Do you have a son named Ricky? Oh, yes, we do. Well, uh, I found this notebook on the running board of my truck. It has his name and address on it. Oh, I'll be darned. I would have brought it over sooner. I'm sorry, but uh, hope he didn't get in any trouble at school. No, no, not at all. You know, it, it's a strange thing. Uh, Ricky told us exactly what happened, but, well, I'm kind of ashamed to admit this. We sort of didn't believe him. Well, I certainly hope you didn't let him know that. Oh, no, 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 no. We didn't Could have, a, have a very bad psychological effect on him. Could even leave him with a neurosis or an emotional disturbance that could stay with him the rest of his life. Oh, yes, yes, I understand that. Children need to feel that they have their parents' trust and confidence. That's what gives a boy a sense of security. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. Well, gee, uh, thanks a lot. Uh, this is awfully nice to bring it over, Mr. Uh... Uh, Freud. Buster Freud. <laughs> Ozzie and Harriet are brought to you on film by Eastman Kodak Company, who also present The Ed Sullivan Show. And remember... The next time you write to family or friends, send along some snapshots. It's the next best thing to a family visit. Good night. This has been an ABC Television Network film presentation.